Hey everyone, in this demo we are going to deploy Control Tower for a brand new AWS account. Here on my screen I'm showing a current state architecture diagram which just shows a single account running on AWS and we're going to come back to this and see how our architecture changes after we've deployed the Control Tower landing zone. In my second tab here we're going to go we have our AWS management console and I'm currently logged in with administrator level privileges. You do want to make sure you have administrator access to this account, or sorry, to your account that you want to deploy Control Tower in. Um, Control Tower requires that you have admin privileges. So from here, we're going to take the scenic route. We're going to go to our search pane, and we're going to go to Control Tower, and we're going to navigate to our Control Tower service landing page. And from here, we're going to click in the top right the Setup Landing Zone button. first setting we have to do is our regional settings. From this we have our home region. The home region is where control tower is going to be hubbed across your landing zone. So for control tower configuration settings for the service, um, additional automation actions with control tower, that's going to all originate inside this home region as you go through your landing zone lifecycle. Now this home region cannot be changed after you've deployed the landing zone. So you want to make sure you select an appropriate home region based on your regional needs for your organization. For this demo, I'm just going to use the US East North Virginia region. Next we have the uh, region deny setting. Now this setting is a very simple, quick security measure uh, that allows us to reduce our attack surface by completely denying access to other regions that are not managed by control tower. Uh, what this means is if we deploy our control tower landing zone with, say, just our U.S. East home region governed, what's going to happen is after the control tower landing zone is deployed and we go inside our accounts, we can use U.S. East 1 however we want, deploy services, deploy resources, etc. But if we try to navigate to another region in that account that is not governed by control tower, we're going to see a lot of explicit denies because we have this explicit deny configuration from control tower for any regions that are not governed by the service. Now it's important to note, if you are doing this for a production environment where you are building a brand new greenfield and this greenfield has, you know, you're going to build your control tower and you're setting up this regional deny setting and your goal is to import accounts from a brownfield environment or staggering accounts from other organizations into this control tower environment it is important that you have a great understanding, a strong understanding of your regional presence so you don't run into a situation where your control tower region deny setting is set up, but you're only governing, let's say, two regions out of the five you're actually operating in, and then you start importing accounts or deploying, trying to deploy resources into accounts through automation for these three additional regions that you're actually in, and you're getting a lot of denies, things are breaking, you just can't access things. We don't want to have that kind of scenario. So if you're going to use this setting, you want to make sure you have a good understanding of what your regional presence is so you don't run into that issue where you're unnecessarily blocking, denying access uh, for services, resources, users, etc. in key regions. Because it's a demo environment and I already know what my landscape is, I'm just going to turn this on to enabled to reduce my attack surface. And then in my select additional regions for governance, I'm going to select uh, the U.S. West region, uh, Oregon, just to have a secondary region to govern. And then all these other regions that are not selected will be ungoverned and therefore will have the region deny setting applied to them. Moving on, I'm going to go to next. And I have our configuration organizational units page. So the foundational OU is something that gets created by control tower. And it's actually where the shared accounts from step three are going to be enrolled in. This is our log archive and our audit account. Now, for both these OUs, we can still configure these OUs. We can edit the names of these OUs after the landing zone's already been deployed. But the key takeaway here is that the security OU is the foundational one that gets the log archive and the audit accounts. So if you do any kind of configuration to this OU, or you maybe move those two accounts out of this OU, you want to make sure you're tracking that and auditing that accordingly. Because as Control Tower is updated as a service, whether it's software updates, backend updates, etc., it's going to use those accounts for verification and compliance to make sure, you know, the whole control tower stack is in check before it tries to run an update or do an additional deployment for itself. And if there's any issues you could encounter, you want to make sure you have a good audit trail of what you did to change these OUs, change where the accounts were, so you don't uh, run into major issues when you're managing your control tower landing zone over its life cycle. So next in step three, 
uh, we have our configuration of our shared accounts. This is where our log archive account and our audit accounts are defined uh, to be created new as well as their email addresses and their names. Uh, you do have the ability to use an existing account for the purposes of log archive and auditing. So let's say you have two accounts that are not really being used and you'd rather use them instead of making brand new accounts and new emails. You can go ahead and select the use existing account and then be able to enter the account ID within the AWS organization that you want and then import that here, okay? Now, it does have to be inside AWS organizations. It has to be something that's available so you can be imported for this, right? So you have to have AWS organizations already available. You, this account has to be a member that can be seen by this account and then be imported, okay? Now, in this case, we are just going to use a brand new account. We're gonna create a brand new email address and we are going to uh, assign this email address to this account so that way you can register it. You also have the ability to change the names of these accounts. However, very important takeaway, these accounts are the ones that are not only deployed by Control Tower, but they are checked and verified when Control Tower tries to do an update or tries to um, do any kind of service checks when it's trying to make sure its health is good. So if you're gonna change the names of these accounts, you wanna make sure you know exactly what these accounts are and they have the right unique names so you know that they belong to Control Tower. So if there's any issues with your landing zone environment, you know which accounts to check and you don't lose them amongst any of your other member accounts in your environment. Now, for a demo environment, the cool thing that we can do is we can simply use the plus one, plus two, plus three configurations of our email addresses. So that way we can register these accounts without having to make brand new emails. Um, the only issue is I'm gonna get a lot of emails sent to my root email address, but to not have to create brand new emails and distribution list for a demo environment, I'm okay with that. So, but do note, this is not a production environment uh, configuration. You wanna make sure you have DLs with the right naming convention, you have the right email addresses for users with the right naming convention, and that you have appropriate access measures for those emails uh, that are coming from AWS when these accounts are being made, okay? So next, we are going to go into our um, additional configuration setting. We are going to leave our access account configuration to AWS Control Tower setting up the account access with Identity Center. What this is going to do, when you have a brand new account, Identity Center is not turned on, but with Control Tower and this setting turned on, it will enable the IAM Identity Center service. And then from there, it's going to enable the ability to use AWS Control Tower groups and permission sets in order to assign access in the environment. So we'll see things like Control Tower admin and other kinds of groups that are related to Control Tower for managing access inside the environment you are able to edit the Identity Center configuration after it's been enabled. So things like the external IDP configuration, so on and so forth. So if you're building a brand new control tower environment, unless you already have a lot of settings inside, let's say a Brownfield organization, where it's a existing org where you're just turning this on in, and you have something that could potentially break, if control tower is integrating with this service, you don't have to use this setting, you can use the self-managed. Uh, but definitely using a greenfield, setting up control tower for the first time, uh, this is totally fine to set up and be able to configure afterwards if you want to enable different settings inside your identity center. Next, we have AWS CloudTrail configuration. This allows us to deploy an organizational wide cloud trail inside the management account for our control tower landing zone. Uh, we will set this to enabled and it should be for any greenfield environment um, to make sure you're getting those audit trails and you're aggregating them into our S3 bucket. Um, so you don't have to deploy a bunch of account level trails that are increasing costs inside your environment. For the log configuration of S3, uh, we're going to leave this as the default values of 1 in 10 years. This defines the retention value uh, for the S3 bucket for the logs that it's holding um, as far as the cloud trail and config logs go. Uh, if you have compliance requirements already and you know what your retention value should be, definitely set these accordingly. So if it's 3 years, 5 years, 7 years, 10 years, depending on um, the compliance requirements you're meeting, uh, definitely feel free to change these accordingly. But for this demo, we're just gonna leave it as default one in 10, and we'll move on from there. Last but not least, before we review, we have the KMS encryption option. This allows us to encrypt the CloudTrail and config data that goes into our S3 bucket um, with a KMS key. Now it's key to note, that is a different 
encryption mechanism than encrypting the S3 bucket itself. So something to bear in mind if you're going to use this setting, what's going to happen is the data will be encrypted as it goes into the bucket, but the bucket itself will not necessarily be set with the KMS encryption key. So for example, the CloudTrail data as it's passed into S3 will have that KMS encryption. Okay, this KMS key is going to exist inside this management account. That's where it's going to get created. And it's going to be used to encrypt the org level cloud trail data and send that in. So if you plan on doing any kinds of automation or reading of the data coming from this log archive bucket where the cloud trail logs and conflict logs are being stored, make sure you're aware of that because you're going to have to get access to this KMS key inside the management account to be able to decrypt that data and import into whatever your target log analysis tool is. So what we're going to do for this demo, we're going to show how to create this key. I'm going to click enable and customize encryption settings, and I'm going to go to the create KMS key. This is going to take me to the KMS console. And what we need to do is we need to create a key and it's going to create our default policy. And then we're going to go to that key and we're going to edit that policy with the cloud trail and config configuration to enable them to use the key for the encryption decryption operations. Inside the KMS key configuration, we're going to leave the key type as symmetric. We're going to use the key usage as encrypt and decrypt. In our advanced options, we're going to leave it as KMS recommended for our key material origin. And the regionality, we're going to use the single region key. Now, this is important because a little counterintuitive, but the KMS key must be a single region key. Although Control Tower is a multi-region service, and this cloud trail is an organizational-wide cloud trail, and it's pulling data from multiple regions and tied to the organization across accounts, the KMS key itself must be a single region for this encryption setting for a Control Tower. Okay. We're going to go to next and we're just going to add a simple alias of control tower key and our description. We're going to say KMS encryption setting for control tower landing zone inside our tags. We're just going to add a tag that says service and we'll call the value control tower as one word. Move on to next. We're not going to send any key administrators. We're not going to set any defined key usage permissions. And we're just going to review and we're going to hit finish. Once here, we're going to go to our control tower key. And we're going to go to our key policy tab. And under key policy, we're going to go to switch to policy view. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab from the documentation, which I'm not showing here. I'm going to grab the policies for the cloud trail and config settings to use KMS and, and in particular this key. So I'm going to go to edit policy inside our policy view. I'm going to just to keep this sit here. I'm going to add a comma after this bracket document and I'm going to tab in from our documentation and I'm going to make edits to our config and our cloud trail settings. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my account number here and I'm going to replace it for the management account ID as this account that we're in is going to be the management account for our landing zone. And for my home region, I'm going to use the US East one. That's our home region that we selected in our settings. And for our KMS key ID, it's this ID right here. Kind of the easiest way to copy this in is just copy the link here. And then you see the KMS key ID is all the way at the end, starting with the D. And we're just going to delete all this header information up to the slash and leave that there. Okay. Next, we're going to take the same ARN because we're going to need it for our cloud trail SID. And we're going to put that here under ARN. And I'll link the documentation in the description below for where this policy came from. But essentially, we're just going through and editing their policy uh, with these uh, items from our environment so that we can use uh, this setting inside our environment. Okay. So we're going to do that. And then last but not least, a one more management account ID setting. And we're going to hit that here. And then we are going to hit save changes. We see we had no issues with our policy edits. We're in good shape. And now we are going to go to our landing zone. We're going to click on the search for KMS key. And we're going to see our control tower key is available. 
And once we click it, you'll see there's a quick load and we'll see that we got no errors. Control Tower does do a quick kind of search to see that the policies exist in a way that allows us to use the KMS key for the landing zone. So if there was any issue with the policy, maybe we missed the configuration setting, maybe it detected that it couldn't work, we would see an error here that the key was invalid, okay? So because we didn't get that error, we can go ahead and move forward, go through our review process, and go down here, and we can verify that all of our settings are what we set it up to. And we need to click on step five, our checkbox that says, I understand Control Tower will use a uh, we'll use permissions to administer database resources, right? It's going to deploy cloud trails. It's going to deploy S3 buckets. It's going to vend accounts. So we need to check this off and in order to allow Control Tower to do this on our behalf. Next, we're going to click Setup Landing Zone. And now we can see our landing zone is being set up. It's gonna take around an hour. So I'm going to take a second, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna let this run and then I'll come back and we'll take a look at what control tower looks like. And then we'll take a look at our current state architecture diagram to see what's been created in our environment. So here we are, now we see that we have control tower up and running. We can see we have our two organizational units. Uh, we have our three accounts. Um, we have our preventive controls and detective controls, which we won't talk about too much in this demo. We're just talking about this initialization um, in a future demo. If you guys want to talk more about this, definitely leave a comment below and we can take a look. Uh, for this, we'll take a look at our organization on the top left here for control tower. And we can see that we have our root OU. We have our sandbox OU and our security OU, as well as our workshop account. So the workshop account is under the root OU. This is our master account, our management account for our organization. And we also have our uh, security OU, which has our audit account and our log archive account. So with that, to top off this demo, we're gonna go into our diagram and we're gonna take a look at our final architecture now that we have control tower deployed. So we can see inside our AWS Cloud environment, we have our root OU, which has our master payer account in it. And we have our identity center enabled. We have control tower enabled. We have our control tower lifecycle events for our automation. We have our KMS key that we use to encrypt our cloud trail logs, our org trail, as well as AWS organizations, as this is the service that actually handles the organizational unit creations. We have our security OU underneath our root OU as depicted here in the tab, we can see that we have the root OU and our sandbox OU and security OU right here underneath root. And with that, we have our log archive account with our AWS CloudTrail and config bucket, as well as our audit account that has our config aggregator. One thing that's not depicted here is our SNS subscription for our aggregation notifications. We'll make sure to add that uh, later, but essentially when you deploy your control tower landing zone, uh, the audit account will receive notifications that it's been subscribed to an SNS topic for aggregation of alerts, uh, which it stores here. So with that, that is the end of this demo. Um, hope you liked it. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, complaints at all, feel free to leave them in the comments below and uh, we'll see you next time.